I knew a long time ago that I would like to do volunteer work to help others. The disadvantaged, perhaps, something involving children. I couldn't see more than that. I didn't know where, what city, or even what country. But I kept getting that desire flashing through me every year or two. It left me feeling satisfied and warm. It would be the right thing to do. I would be fulfilled giving something back to help children. The world has enough widget makers and followers. I'd like to take a shot at leading, contributing, making the biggest impact in some part of the developing world. In a one-hour meeting with our local TV station, we made our pitch and they liked our story. That's when Laverne turned to me and asked, do you want to come along and be our videographer? I'm on my way with No Ordinary Journey now as their videographer to capture his videos for you. The foundation is run by a elected board. It's an NGO. Here we are upon arrival in Vietnam making some last minute adjustments before the missions start. It's our core team just doing some last minute adjustments to the agenda. We did several hospitals within the cities and several in the country just to get a good coverage of the kind of facilities that are available to the parents who have children with cerebral palsy. Most of the time our teams traveled in one bus so we got to connect well. Other times we would just take taxis if it's within the city. We'd arrive usually by 8 a.m. at each hospital being welcomed by our mission banner. We would meet first with the hospital director and core staff, explain to them what we'll be doing. Usually the parents came in on day one by themselves without their children. We'd orient them, have them sign papers. They would get some introductions. We would all introduce ourselves. Here Laverne's giving her story about Ksenia's CP journey. Here's more orientation. Getting all the parents with the children lined up was quite good considering it was very hot and humid. Most rooms were not air conditioned. The cool thing we did is we had their parents uh, tell us their CP stories. Very touching and moving because some of these parents have never shared these stories in public before. So it gave them a good chance to discuss and share their feelings. Our volunteer staff gave the hospital staff and therapists some core training with overheads with the aid of our local Vietnamese translators. We also delivered 12 wheelchairs to the most needy of children that came in for these workshops. Uh, this is one child receiving a wheelchair and one of our therapist volunteers is showing them how to adjust the wheelchair. Here's a happy boy. That's what the workshops look like. Uh, we took up to 10, 12 parents with their children in a group uh, circular setting, uh, rotating every two hours so that each therapist gets to work with the child one-on-one, -on -one, showing the mother how aids can be used. Here, arm stiffeners are shown. Limb mobility, one of our other doctors also did assessments of the limbs showing how the limbs can grow over time and how they become less rigid and why they need exercise. Final days we always took a group picture of the parents and the children. It was a, a fun time. I think our group was more excited than they were. Today we were at the uh, 
Rehabilitation Hospital in Hue, and this afternoon we're headed out to visit with some families that have kids with cerebral palsy in their homes. So we're going to see how they actually live and what they actually do. Our whole group isn't going together, we're splitting up and going to five different homes. And this part of the project is really more about educating us than it is about educating them. But certainly our therapists and our experts are uh, welcome to talk to the parents about what their issues are. But we wanted to just understand the actual conditions that the kids are living under. This was my first home visit in Hui City, modest setting. Many times the parents will be living with the children or vice versa to help each other's out, both with the children and financially. Here Kathleen is showing the mother what kind of aids the child can use. You can see the child has arm stiffeners on her because her CP affliction affects her arms. Her arms don't have much strength or mobility. The stiffeners will help the child to pull herself up and learn how to stand. So this is the home visit I got to go on. This is their back streets. It's a one lane wide paved road. We then had to transfer to motorbikes. We broke up into groups of three because it's difficult to get into some of these places. Plus there's not that much room for people. We drove for about 15 minutes, three of us on a motorbike, then uh, crossed the footbridge. And then this monkey bridge. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oi. Are you getting a picture of this, Terry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Please don't lean on it. Okay. Okay, maybe go out of the way. No, go out of the way. If I have to go, I'll go fast. Okay, good. <laughs> you made it. Yeah. I don't... Oh. We all made it across, and then there was this, this, this narrow path to Can's house. A grass walled. Hard packed dirt floor, very clean. Got inside, was very clean, tidy. There's Can on the left. Hello. Hello, you. Now, instantly, when I met him, my father in law's face flashed before me. I haven't been thinking about my father in law, and it just, just flashed. I didn't think much of it. And you were just setting up setting up the whole group and family. We were there for about an hour visiting with them, asking them questions. How, how, how old is uh, Tom? Oh, 1999, so that's... 17 years old. 17. It's a neighbor. Neighbor, okay. It's right next door. Okay. Can I sit here? Yes. Okay. Can I sit here? Yes. So one of, the, one of the things that I see is that Cam has lots of support in this community. Yeah. Yeah. He's very attentive. <laughs> 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 You tell her that I know she told a bit of the story uh, this morning about uh, about Tom, but maybe both mom and dad could tell us a bit of the story again, more more detail. Yeah. Sáng nay cô có tới cái buổi họp phải không ạ? Yeah. Yeah. Hồi sáng thì chắc là cô cũng có nói sơ qua về bé cảnh. Thì bây giờ sẵn nhân có chú đây nữa thì cả hai người có thể nói chi tiết cụ thể hơn về bé cảnh không ạ? À? Hai người có thể nói chi tiết cụ thể hơn về bé cảnh không ạ? À? 
nhảy đó nhảy mà mà cô này dương mấy mấy cô nhảy luôn nó bình bình đục cây cam á ừ rồi đi tập bên đây dịch hết năm ok ok rồi nó biết máy vậy nó gì nó cong nó ỉ ông đá đá vậy ok But when you said that when he was very young, he had a hard time sitting up. How did he learn to sit up so well like he is now? How did how did he learn that? Cô nói lúc sinh ra thì nằm không không có đứng được này kia nhưng mà sao bây giờ ngồi được? Cô tập như thế à? Tập ở bên trung tâm. Tập ở bên trung tâm. Được bao lâu ạ? Vậy là trước khi tập không có ngồi được. Okay. So he's been at the center, physical therapy center, for one year. One year. Thanks to that, so he can now see. So is he is he still going right now? Bây giờ vẫn còn đi không ạ? Dạ. Bây giờ vẫn còn đi cái trung tâm. Nghỉ lâu. Tại sao ạ? Mấy mấy năm rồi nó có được đi. Tại sao? Ở nhà anh giữ nhỏ này, con nó đi làm. Yeah, he went there for only one year, and then they stopped because they cannot afford. Oh, they're traveling back and forth. They cannot afford the cost. The co but which yeah. which are the cost? The cost of the travel, the cost of the treatment. What what can't they afford? Like which was the what was the block? Cô nói nghèo quá trả không nổi cái tiền đó là tiền đi lại hay là tiền chữa trị hay là tiền gì? Đi đi đảm ta cho cô mình ăn. Giờ đi trung tâm đó là phải trả tiền hả? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it doesn't cost anything to yeah. go to the center, but because of the uh, family situation, mm -hmm. no one stay home um, to watch out the house because they mm -hmm. have some livestock there. Yeah, yeah so uh, the mom has to take... One more, one, two... We finish our visit by getting a group shot of their family and neighbors. Very good. I just want to, I just want to thank the dad and the mom and the grandpa and all the community for supporting this young man. Bye bye, Cam. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. He was very interested in my video camera because I couldn't let him touch it because I wouldn't have gotten these clips. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye Oh, oh, this is the guy that was here? 
Yeah. We just uh, we just donated a wheelchair. Uh, like Lauren said, it just came through this morning, so that's that's where it's going to camp. So I better not fall in now. Yeah. Oh, that would be funny. Very. <laughs> Actually, this one's better, eh, Terry? Oh, yeah, last this, year? Is, this is a lot better than this. The, the handrail was better for us. The handrail was, was <laughs> rickety last yeah. year. Hey, this is Terry of TDK Talks, and I'm here on location on another No Ordinary Journey mission. Just to give you a little bit of background, this is the home visit that the three of us did last March of 2014. Right now we're in the deep south of Vietnam. It's about a four hour drive south of Saigon into the province of Trevin. And just a little ways, maybe another hour's drive outside of the city of Trevin. This is the one home visit that the three of us did. We broke up into groups of, of three because it's very hard getting here. As you can see, the, the bike taxi, the monkey bridge to get off the stream right there. It's a challenge getting here. And this is where the three of us did a home visit. We were here for about an hour uh, last year visiting Cam. He's a 17-year-old uh, boy who has cerebral palsy. And one of the things I immediately noticed about Cam was that he had the same soft glow on his face as my father-in-law did, and that struck me right away. I came back here to Cam's place in the Trevin uh, province, which is in the Mekong Delta of Vietnam, to finish up this story, which I thought was particularly amazing. You can see it's a self-subsistence living here where Cam and his uh, close family uh, live and these grounds. They have their, their kitchen behind me here which, which uh, takes care of all their needs. Now last year when we were on our mission here, we were near the end of the uh, two weeks. It was, a, it was Thursday, and a Thursday afternoon was when the three of us uh, did the CAM uh, visit here, the, the home visit where we met uh, CAM. And the first thing that struck me about CAM was the glow on his face and how he looked like uh, my father-in-law, who just passed away about two months ago back in Canada. It struck me immediately, but I didn't think much of it. The next day, Friday morning, that was the last day of our workshop, and that's when the parents were bringing down their kids. And so too did Cam's parents, brought them uh, into the hospital where we were doing these assessments. That Friday morning, I was always connecting with my wife on Skype back in Canada because she didn't come uh, with us on this um, mission. And we had planned to donate a wheelchair uh, uh, for this mission but she didn't get around to it until that morning and she did it online electronically when we talked at 7 a.m. we left it was about an hour drive to the hospital we got there Cam has a, a very severe uh, limb disfigurement from the waist down. He cannot walk, his limbs are bent to one uh, side and that too reminded me of my uh, father-in-law back in, in Winnipeg. 
And I was filming this, of course, just for the, the charity website. I was filming all this, and uh, when, when, when Barry saw that, that Cam had this disfigurement, uh, he turned to Laverne and says, there's nothing we can do, but he really needs a wheelchair. And that's coincidentally when Laverne turned to me and she says to Barry, well, we just got a wheelchair donation this morning from Terry and his wife. It turned out later that day, I realized, when I talked to my wife again later, she says, it's interesting because that Friday, April 4th, was exactly two months that her father passed away in Canada who had multiple sclerosis and a similar leg disfigurement that I saw in Cam. So it's interesting that half a world away, exactly two months to the day of when my father-in-law passed away, I saw a likeness in him, in Cam's face. <laughs> Hi Cam, how are you? Remember me? Oh, I'm fine. So you're using the wheelchair, good? Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is the wheelchair. You use it a lot, I hope. Uh, I he, said he, can, he said he can wheel himself outside on his own with his arms. So. Right? It really inspired me, the fact that these these forces in the universe sometimes come together and line up to to mean something, to, to prove that what we do is right. And the fact that my uh, father-in-law uh, now passed away uh, when we met Cam, that was exactly two months to the day um, and he reminded me so much of him it sort of left us my family and I with a uh, sort of a living legacy of uh, my father-in-law uh, Ted can you tell us what you think coming back here now and seeing Cam and seeing the wheelchair and just your reactions after your second visit well, for one, I'm, I'm really surprised how well my memory is. It just feels like yesterday, even though it's a year and a half later. It was important for me to come back because it really closes the story off. Uh, closes the story of how Cam uh, reminded me so much of my father-in-law last year and the timing, how everything worked out to that Friday morning when our donation for his wheelchair came through. Um, it's, it's like, uh, you can't plan stuff like that. I mean, there's a reason why it happened. And, I was saying earlier, it's like, it's a way for someone who passes to have their legacy passed forward to some other person in a, in a way that helps that, that person in memory of the person who passed. And for us, for my family, it's very special because uh, my father-in-law, he was wheelchair ridden for the last 20 years of his life, uh, much the same as Cam has, uh, you know, no mobility of his legs. So that robbed us of a lot of good times because we could not go anywhere really to do things uh, with my father-in-law. So he was limited to wheelchair access. So it must feel pretty good to come back and see his wheelchair well used, well loved. Yes, uh, we were speaking inside uh, to the mother and she had said that she's uh, at home alone with Cam during the day because the father goes to work. She said the wheelchair has helped her immensely because she does not have to lift Cam to move him. She can easily wheel him him, uh, with her so that if she's in the house doing something uh, and then she wants to or needs to come outside to do something she can just wheel him out he's 17 so he is uh, of some weight uh, it's not that easy to lift and carry him so I'm glad that the wheelchair has uh, gave them that extra uh, quality of living and as you can see by the grounds here it's very much uh, level uh, very easy for a wheelchair to get through. We made a little bit more uh, work for the father because now he has to maybe extend the yard a bit more so that their son Cam could have a bigger uh, riding range with his wheelchair. But uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good problem to have. So did you ever imagine when you got hooked up with NOJF that you would have this personal impact for, for a kid with cerebral palsy living in a rural area in Vietnam? 
Definitely not. I mean, one thing led to another. I came along uh, just as a videographer. When NOJF and a specific donor are providing a wheelchair, um, there's more to it than it just being a piece of equipment, isn't there? I think it's uh, it's a big part of them. It becomes uh, it's a part of them. It, it enhances their their quality of life, uh, the children as well. Because that way the children can actually uh, go out and uh, perhaps be with the uh, with the family and their friends uh, to be a part of the family and not just uh, staying in the house perhaps all the time. I'm a videographer that's looking to capture stories and uh, in reality uh, a big story happened for me and our family which brought us back here the second time. Right? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's looking. He's he's he says I've had enough. I've had enough cameras, right? I've had enough cameras. Perhaps there's some meaning behind it. So if you have an opportunity to do something for a charity that means something special to you and your family, by all means, uh, go ahead and explore it. Uh, it's a great way to give back. It's a great way to meet other people, other cultures, and uh, to help them in ways that really doesn't doesn't uh, tax us. Okay, Cam. Maybe we'll see you again soon. I don't know. But we'll be thinking about you. Oh. We'll have a lot of pictures of you, right? And uh, we'll keep that wheelchair running oh. for you. Uh. Right? Maybe maybe he doesn't like goodbyes. Yeah. Like, like I never did when I was small. But all goodbyes lead to new hellos, so. <laughs>